YouTube if you subscribe and everybody in the remaining social networks here is XD Dark King and today we are going to do another West Watch today Scrooge McDuck vs Shovel Knight well this ought to be good <laughs> so disclaimer this is for Christmas purpose and as such it protected and the was fair use I have no interest in any copyright shenanigans whatsoever so without further ado let me just Without any ado, let's do this. And... Play! <laughs> Some people adventure for wealth. For others, the wealth is in the adventure. <laughs> Either way, you'll be successful if you can bounce off your enemies' heads. Like Scrooge McDuck, the wealthiest waterfowl to ever live. <laughs> and Shovel Knight, a shining example of the code of chivalry. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Disclaimer, I didn't play any of their games. In 1867, Scrooge McDuck was born to a poor family in Glasgow, Scotland. He grew up Man. a relatively normal duckling He's until old. his 10th birthday. Scrooge's father took him to see the remains of the old McDuck clan castle. See, their family wasn't always super poor, and Scrooge was inspired by the sight of their former glory. So the next day, he got a job and earned his first money ever. A dime. Problem <laughs> was, it was an American dime, and Scrooge was in Scotland. Naturally, feeling yeah, pretty cheated, Scrooge swore he'd build his fortune by being, I quote, tougher than the toughies and sharper than the sharpies. And oh boy, oh boy. So he hopped <laughs> over to America to start his quest for wealth. And judging by his money vault today, where he literally swims in gold, I'd say he did a pretty effing good job. No obstacle was too difficult to keep him from fortune. By my estimations, his entire net worth today rests around 300 quadrillion dollars. Rich as he is, he got a lot of treasure trove somehow. So this wealthy waterfowl's got more guns than I do. Not to mention the trusty cannons he has hidden around his manor. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like some old-fashioned artillery for home defense. Scrooge also has a number of unorthodox high-tech firearms. Or as normal people call them, laser guns. My favorite is the one that can shoot through solid steel titanium. It's Damn. called the burglar stunner, but I'm pretty sure that'll do a hell of a lot more than stun you. Well, my favorite would be Scrooge's Nutra Friction and Anti-Inertia Rays. By removing a target's natural friction and inertia, these guns can turn a foe so slippery they can't grip anything, or take away all momentum from that foe's movement and weight. With nice. that friction, a person will slide miles upon miles with no hope of stopping themselves. <laughs> Without inertia, a cannonball will have even less impact than falling leaves, though it is important to note that these guns do not affect personal gravity. Uh, yeah, <laughs> science and stuff. So if I nice. him, I'd prefer the feel of one of his rifles or swords. Or his signature sidearm, his trusty cane. What's so special about a dusty old cane, you ask? Well, just look at the old quack go! Not every duck can turn their cane into both a club and a pogo stick. Even when he's unarmed, Damn. Scrooge's thirst for wealth has pushed his body past many preconceived limits. <laughs> he possesses incredible strength, speed, and durability. Not to mention, the dude's got some serious huevos. One time when he was stuck in the savannah, he walked right up to a lion, beat it in a roaring match, and then just rode it all the way to town. He's also a surprisingly skilled marksman. Like some sort of gun-toting Mr. Miyagi, he can shoot flies out of the air with perfect precision. And he's no slouch with a blade. Apparently, Buffalo Bill taught him how to knife fight in, uh, engine style. <laughs> and, and now's a great time to remind you that Scrooge is pretty old. It was a different time. Ah, uh, racism aside, it takes a lot to put this mighty mallard down. He survived the Titanic sinking, being frozen solid in the Yukon, <laughs> fighting yeah. hordes of wild animals, and taking a cannon shot to the face before being dragged through a minefield. He's even survived a trip to the literal center of the Earth, which, if you've forgotten, is pretty much super lava. That's putting it mildly. The Earth's core is estimated to be well over 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. More yeah. than hot enough to cook your goose. He's outrun really? a cheetah, which can reach 75 miles per hour. He's stopped a charging water buffalo, which can weigh up to 2,600 pounds. 
And did you ever hear that legend where George Washington threw a silver dollar across the Potomac River? Well, Scrooge can do that too. And he even caught the coin on the other side. <laughs> because Scrooge isn't gonna waste a single dollar. Seems pretty impressive, but Scrooge has some massively problematic flaws. Least of all is his age. He's 150 years old. That won't do him any favors in a fight. And why can't he fly? I mean, he's a duck with his own private plane. And he has human teeth and they really should just hire a poultry scientist at Disney. Oh, I'll send my resume. Well, more importantly would be his overpowering greed. He can often lose sight of his goals or explode into an uncontrollable rage if someone threatens his wealth. He is pretty selfish and has a one-track <laughs> mind. I don't know if the uncontrollable rage part though is such a bad thing. Certainly not in some situations. Like the time Soapy Slick tried to rip Scrooge off, steal his property, and humiliate him by chaining him to a steamboat and making fun of his letters from home, including one informing Scrooge of his mother's passing. That's more than enough to piss Scrooge off. <laughs> so much that he literally tore the entire boat apart with his bare hands. Or damn. Wings. Holy damn, that's a real foul strength. Just goes to show that nothing can stand between Scrooge and his wealth. I don't know which was wilder in those days. The wolves or me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I tell you. Yeah, show on night, I don't think he stands a chance. Sorry. The world was wild, and adventurers roamed the land. The most famous of whom were partners Shield Knight and Shovel Knight. You can tell how good they are by the giant piles of loot behind them. Shovel Knight Damn. and Shield Knight traveled together, and they were the stuff of legend. That is, until the Tower of Fate. Once inside a cursed amulet, well, knocked Shovel cinematic. Knight out cold. Again, I when didn't play the game. Up, Shield Knight was gone, and the tower was sealed shut. And boy, did that bug him out. Duck -tails. So like all depressed heroes, he abandoned and everything was fun. and went to the wilderness to do a bunch of farming and most likely drinking. Soon anyway. after he retired, an evil woman called the Enchantress took power, along with a group of villainous knights known as the Order of No Quarter. Ah, get it? It's funny. So maybe sure. retiring wasn't the most responsible idea. Man's gotta mourn, Wiz. Man's gotta mourn. You mean like when you took a week off to mourn after your divorce? Because I'm pretty sure all you did was get drunk and shoot fireworks <laughs> at my house. Ah, uh, yeah. Man, that was a real good mourn. Well, anyway, Shovel Knight's break didn't last long. After the Enchantress and her knights took hold of the land, the Tower of Fate unsealed. Knowing it was his only chance to find out what happened to Shield Knight, he dug back into action. And with him, he took his mightiest weapon. A shovel. Don't sell it short, it's not just any shovel, it's a shovel blade. And thanks to its surprisingly versatile nature, it can slash through anything from rats to- Holy crap, did he just kill a dragon with that thing? Yes, yeah. he did. That reminds me of the time I made my own weapon out of a yard tool. I miss my rake blade, but everyone got really confused and offended whenever I yelled my catchphrase, prepare to get raked. So <laughs> I stopped using it. Oh. Uh oh, probably smart. <laughs> well, thanks to the Shovel Blade's unique attributes, Shovel Knight has a repertoire of deadly attacks, his signature being the Shovel Drop. This deadly downward drop allows him to dig into his enemies, pogo stick style. <laughs> now, where have I seen that before? Yeah. He also has a charge attack that, where? when unleashed, does massive damage and can even penetrate armor. If his enemy is more than a scoop's reach away, he can strike the earth to fire a dangerous spark that travels along the ground. It's not bad. You know what else it's good for? Digging up all of that sweet, sweet treasure. But the Shovel Blade is far from his only weapon. Throughout his journey, Shovel Knight has acquired many magical relics, which are quite handy in battle, though they do well. require access to a limited supply of magic to use. He can set stuff on fire with the flare wand, or punch through compact dirt with the dust knuckles. He can also take the wind out of his enemies with the throwing anchor, or fly a short distance with the propeller dagger. If Shovel Knight needs to kill bad guys in those hard to reach spaces, he has his trusty chaos orb, which acts like a bouncy ball of doom. He also possesses the mobile gear, a mechanism which allows him to traverse dangerous terrains such as spikes and small gaps with ease. Uh, mobile that. gear. But my favorite relic is the war horn, which is kind of like the horn of Gondor, but it makes people explode. <laughs> Shovel Knight carries a few defensive relics as well. Yeah, like those sweet fish goblets. You mean the truple chalices? 
These special liquid receptacles can carry i substances which, when drunk, provide certain benefits to Shovel Knight. Most notably, the i of Renewal, which fully restores his health and magic. Not and bad. how do you get such a useful liquid? From a bunch of fish that perform an interpretive dance and spit in your cup. It's dinner <laughs> and a show! Last but not least, Why not? the Phase Locket. This relic allows Shovel Knight to pass through his enemies and even grants him temporary invincibility while under its effect. Not bad. Like all good knights, our shovel-wielding friend protects himself with a suit of shining armor. Actually, he's got a few of them. His most capable all-around set is the Dynamo Mail. Along with providing the kind of defense you need for fighting the forces of evil, it has an added bonus. Hitting just about anything with his shovel drop builds up a powerful charge attack. Normally, a large suit of armor comes with a lot of extra weight, but Shovel Knight doesn't let that slow him down. Even in full plates, our delving hero seemingly never tires and is agile enough to dodge everything from cannonballs to fireballs. Actually, the weight is more of a bonus since his attack of choice is bouncing on heads. Quiz, <coughs> math that. On it, comparing his height to these doors, Shovel Knight appears to be about 4 feet 6 inches tall. Given his uh -huh. broad physique, he likely weighs approximately 100 pounds at most. In the 14th century, a knight's plate armor for combat typically weighed about 60 pounds. Scaling to Shovel Knight's height, his armor likely weighs 50 pounds. Including the 5-pound shovel, he must drop with a force of over 6,700 joules of kinetic energy. In comparison, uh, Mike Tyson okay. can punch with up to 1,600 joules and has knocked out 44 people in the ring. And Shovel Knight's striking power is over four times stronger than that. Damn! Good job! No wonder Shovel Knight was able to take down the entire order of no quarter, including a giant steampunk mech and the <laughs> Enchantress herself. Damn. He's also stubborn enough to hold his breath underwater for an impressively indefinite amount of time. <coughs> and he even held his own against the Battle Toads and Kratos, the upcoming god of war. Yeah, what sure. Hell, Why not? Really? That's awesome. Guess you sell enough games, you can get anybody. But even after all that, Shovel Knight doesn't seem the most intelligent warrior. Yes, after thank After all, the only reason he gave up on Shield Knight for so long is because he just assumed she was dead. Still, he's one deadly warrior who isn't afraid to put his enemies six feet under. You know, because he digs holes and stuff. Okay, then. All right, the combatants are dance. set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, I've got some free food for you. Now, I'm a man who likes a good home cooked meal, but going out to buy or hunt my own food is a hassle. If only there was some way. Anyway, while this plays in the background, well, I still think Scrooge McDuck can win. I mean, he tanked a lot more than Shovel Knight did. In that explanation, so. Yeah. Maybe Shovel Knight is slightly more agile, but I don't think he has a firepower to kill Scrooge. So, yeah. That has nothing to do with the fact that I've seen DuckTales and haven't played any of Shovel Knight's games. Well, game and dash expansions, but you get the meaning. Anyway. Anyway. You know, the only reason why I'm letting the ad run is because, well, I'm using their video. Various or not, <sighs> they pay for it. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com forward slash battle. But right now, it's time for our death battle. So, let's dance.
Why not? Like I said, so I didn't have the firepower. Cold. With his own weapon. Shovel Knight might have been able to uphold the code of chivalry, but he could not hold up to Scrooge's wealth of experience and superior strength. Aside from the extra hundred plus years of experience he's got over Shovel Knight, Scrooge's feats blew him out of the water. For example, there's no way that Shovel could have put him down very quickly when he's powered through a minefield like it's nothing. And remember how he threw a coin across the Potomac River and rode across fast enough to catch it? Well, we know the average width of the river is 30 <coughs> feet, and he threw the coin at an angle of 20 degrees. After some quick calculations, this means he must have thrown the coin, boarded his boat, rode across the entire river, and exited the boat to catch the coin in less than 5.4 seconds. Damn. This means he must have been rowing the boat at speeds well over 164 miles per hour. Jesus, how fast are his arms moving there? To make all that work, at least 14,400 rotations per minute. That's ducking awesome! <laughs> he is strong enough to rip apart a steamboat after all. But regardless of Scrooge's power, Shovel Knight had very little options to defend against the duck's wackier, physics-breaking weaponry. Those that could buy him some time could only last for so long due to his limited supply of magic. Plus, Scrooge has fought knights and magicians before, while Shovel Knight never fought anyone quite like Scrooge McDuck. Looks like Shovel Knight dug his own grave. The winner is Scrooge McDuck. Yep, so who's next? Next time on Death Battle. Spider-Man or Venom? Venom, okay. Against who? Hey guys, I'm Chad of Blue Moon Stick. I'm back well, with my Wiz, and no, next time be, we've uh, got... Yeah, that will be Marvel. for us who's he gonna be us to find out. To our social media will be announcing it very shortly. And you could have watched this death battle early and all of our videos early, plus like merch discounts and a bunch of great stuff by becoming a first member. It's free to try, so click <coughs> the link in the description below. Sign up today. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Anyway, man, that was fun. And well explained and predictable. I was right. For a change. <laughs> anyway, people. Like I said, the animation was fluid, the sprites were well done, and was a good fight all around. So, hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, I'll see you around. Ta-ta!